Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of Fitz Ruby Cast featuring Dawn of War 2 Retribution. Here we are on episode 50, 50 whole games later. And tonight I've got a special guest with me, a recent friend and fellow caster, all the way from California, Mr. Steve Bud. Oh, hey, dudes. How's it going? So, Steve is a guy that's recently started casting as well, now leading his newly acquired Bud army onto the fields of battle. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm excited to, uh, to participate in uh, episode 50 here, man. It's gonna be sweet. Yeah, we've got a battle on Calderas today. Big, wide, open, spread out map versus Apothecarius, who is actually Mr. Rosen, versus DSM, who goes by uh, Deus Ex Machina, I guess. But uh, I think he uses the S. Uh, he, he lines that up a little different. So he's Deus Sex Machina. And that's that's his little clever play right there. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm really excited to see um, Rosen um, play again. I, I saw a couple games of him a while ago, and he's just a beast, man. Um, bringing back the like kind of old Space Marine Apothecary, like it's really exciting. I haven't seen it in a while. Yeah, I mean, everybody's been talking about how the Apothecary just isn't what he used to be and doesn't live up to all the OP Apothecary that everyone's used to crying about, so... We'll have to see how this plays out and if he can uh, he can bring the hurt like the old days. Yep, yep. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and get started here in three, two, one, five, six, battle. seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, we we good? good. All right. So apothecary versus Lord General. Now, if the Lord General gets his sergeant, they'll actually be pretty much even up on the uh, on the heels department. And, uh, of course, the Lord General can reinforce yeah, yeah, on the field and uh, and pretty much heal himself as well as his army. Yeah, I'm really just kind of looking to see what um, what Rosen kind of goes for his unit comp here, because I think it's really going to base off of that. Like, DSM's going to really have to um, respond to, like, either two tacks or attack, uh, you know, ASM or something. Recently, myself against Imperial Guard, I've just been going a quick two tacks into ASM and just going a heavy tier one. But it looks like Rosen is not prioritizing his uh, his requisition points, so I don't think he'll be going for that heavy early build. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, if you get like two tacks, especially in this uh, matchup, is going to be super strong. I mean. Uh, it's gonna be able to deal with the Sentinel like super easy, and like even if he does go a late ASM or something, um, there's not really much to stop it unless he goes like heavy weapons team or something. Ready for battle. Yeah, I mean the two tacks really just put so much meat out on the table. Normally, especially with the apothecary, normally the guardsmen can outshoot the tactical marines, but with a heal and tying up both squads, uh, it's very difficult to take down. So it looks like Rosen's already moving up to the power node here. <laughs> yeah, we see uh, Lord General already getting that sergeant out like you were talking about. So yeah, they're going to be even on uh, their healing ability. Yeah, it looks like uh, Rosen's a bit too brazen with these attacks. I don't think he's going to be in position to do anything about this engagement because the Apothecary is getting shot down right now. He's not going to last long against any kind of firepower. Had to waste the heal on himself, which you almost never want to have to do. Yeah, I would have almost recommended him to do it on the tacks and kind of just hide out behind that cover because those guardsmen wouldn't have been able to really push that Apothecary off. Oh man, and one tack goes down already, which is, I mean, that's really what you gotta do is just minimize tack losses, because you have to kill yeah. so many guardsmen to even make it remotely close to an even wreck uh, loss on that. Ooh, and um, Rosen actually is kind of defying our expectations here. He's going the uh, Devastator. Oh yeah, we were so, talking. So I mean, it's gonna be—it's definitely gonna, yeah, it's gonna, definitely gonna be effective. But I don't know. I think I still would have liked to see at least double tax, maybe double tax Dev. But uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll see another tack later. He still is floating a lot. So. One of our strategic points. Yeah, I just feel with the two tacks, you have a lot stronger field presence, especially with the apothecary, because you can see getting pushed off just once against this quick sentinel on this huge map. 
I mean, you just can't get back onto the field very quick with Space Marine. Rosen's doing a good job of trying to hold the map with those scouts wherever he can, but uh, they're not going to be able to stay out there. Yeah. And I mean, like, tax are... Oh, yeah, there he goes. He goes he's going for the second tack. Oh, I mean, right. like, against IG, you don't really have, like, a melee squad to really tie up to tax. So, you know, you're not, you don't have to worry about sluggers, like, flanking in or, like, two homogons or something. So, it's really just... In this matchup, it's so nice to just have that, you know, super tanky, uh, like, range... Uh, double range squad just uh, giving the herd out. Yeah, because that main harassment force is, uh, is, of course, that obnoxious sentinel that runs around pecking away at everything and stomping anything yes. on the ground, so... All that Devastator set up perfectly to try to deter that away. And it's in a bad spot right now, actually. There aren't any Guardsmen nearby, and it's going right into enemy territory between those two tacks. Mm -hmm. Devastator's turning around for some point-blank shots, but it does get stomped. Uh... Yeah, it looks like he's going to make it out with that Sentinel. And these Kadashins are uh, are going to be kind of an issue here for Rose. I mean, they're going to provide just enough melee. He's getting into range, so he could melee these tacks or just shoddy him down. He needs to focus that... Oh, he... he... A dev. <laughs> yeah, he needs to get that back up, and he got it up just in time, but he unset up, and now the Lord General's closing in. Oh, what? Oh, and he gets it into melee. Oh, nice sync <laughs> Sink kill with the Lord General on a Devastator Marine, that's got to be embarrassing. But the Lord General is very low himself, he might- Oh, a special attack by the Apothecary. If that had hit, he probably would have been down. Yeah, and he's got to watch out, losing a- He lost attack mod already, they're both getting low, and Catachins are in his retreat path, but looks like they're not going to try and engage in melee, so he's going to still make it out with only one loss. Yeah, I really think those cat Catachins probably could have grabbed a uh, an additional model there. There goes the heal on the Catachins, bringing them back up. And uh, upgrading to their Demolition Man right now, so yeah, I'm sure we're going to be seeing some traps on the field. Rosen has to know that he's going to have to get himself a Scout Sergeant if he doesn't want to lose any models unnecessarily to that. Yeah, and it's going to be a while. I mean, he did just spend absolutely all of his power going tier 2, and he doesn't have, a, you know, any really real power income. Uh, yeah, if he gets off a nice little um, demo trap somewhere, I mean, but I guess they're retreating, so I guess uh, yeah, it'll I'm be okay. Not sure. It felt like he retreated those Catachins a little early. They were right on the edge of that Devastator firing arc. They could have just fallen yeah. back a little bit, but uh, I guess better safe than sorry. Yeah, I mean, Rosen just has to really be careful to keep this power farm. I mean, there's no sense in going tier 2 if you don't have any power to, like, build anything out of it. I mean, I'd say more, more oh, the that's the case more wrong. when you're considering, like, tier 3. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you still have to worry about it in tier 2 as well, I think. Yeah, he dropped some extra power right there. It has two gens now. He should be at least able to get maybe a, uh, a Libby or a Razor back out. Yeah, I think either of those would be a good choice. Um, just the Razorback to just, like, make these tacks even more, like, uh, beefy, you know? Like, oh, if he happens to lose one even through his Apothecary heal, it's no big deal. He's still keep it on the field, and it'll uh, enable him to get uh, map control really easily. Yeah, I think staying on the field is imperative against that Imperial Guard, because as soon as you fall back, I mean, that Sentinel, if it's still up, and of course all of the infantry squads are just going to spread out and just take the map. Oh, that dev catching the Catachins out of position, in a good spot right now if those tasks can get some shots in. They just used their... Oh, but there goes the smoke bomb. Oh, nice smoke play. Bomb. Yeah, and I mean, um, you know, DSM still isn't tier 2, so I think uh, Rosen doesn't really have to get any other tier 2 choices. I mean, maybe Libby real quick, but I'd really like to see like a plasma dev as well. To be honest, I don't know. I think it'd be really good in this match. Oh, Especially plasma! on this map, you can just, uh, yeah, you can just kind of camp this mid VP, and it's like super hard for your uh, your opponent to really push. Yeah, on this wide open map against Imperial Guard, plasma devs can just be so devastating if you're uh, if you're not very careful to keep your units separated. Which, I mean, most of the time, even right now, you can see that they're not. 
Yeah, and we see Rosen going, uh, skipping the, the Libby and going straight for the Plasma Dev. I mean, it's gonna, if he can get, uh, like, set it up quickly before DSM really gets a tier 2 choice out, he's gonna completely deny this uh, middle VP from him. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting situation with the dev back behind DSM's troops right now. He's really trying to stall for time. I guess he's trying to wait till he gets to tier 2 so he can get something bigger on the field. But, uh, DSM has to be very careful that he doesn't get uh, in a bad position from that Devastator. Like he's in right now, and look at all the damage these tags will probably do. Oh, actually, they only tagged one of those models. I expected that Sarge to go down. Yeah, I guess he was just on the right, and uh, attacks were kind of on the left. So oh, this could be nice. Look at that Catachin squad uh, on that rear victory point. Plasma Dev doesn't even know it's coming. Uh-oh. Oh, here comes the charge up. Uh, oh, it's not shooting because it can't uh, see. Oh, it fires. oh, no. Oh, no. Here it goes. Let's see, maybe uh, ground Attack target? ground. There he goes. Nice shot. Nice. If those tacks get in the right spot, they could finish it off, but they are on the wrong side. Uh, looks like they're going... Yeah, they're going below. Uh, if he would have attacked ground, maybe at that corner, he would have been able to finish them off for sure. Yeah, he's probably still going to get a model or two, but... Oh, there's a nice attack uh, by the Apothecary! Oh, man! And down HP. they go! Wow, man. That was that was just really unfortunate for DSM. He sh definitely shouldn't have lost him. But, I mean, he didn't really see that uh, Plasma Dev coming. So, you can't really blame him for it. He didn't, but that was his only squad on the field at that time. And if he was watching yeah. them at all... <laughs> I mean, you hear that spin-up on that Plasma Dev. That's, that's one of my favorite parts about Plasma Devs, because... You just get that anticipation when you hear that weapon spin up and you know it's going to hurt something. Yeah, and especially if you're the opponent, you're like, oh man, I know it's coming. <laughs> yeah, if you don't see where that thing's set up, you just want to move. That's all you know, is you need to move. <laughs> yeah, so DSM is going uh, Orgrins and Manacore, which I think is a really good um, combination here, especially against... Um, uh, Rosen's unit composition as he sees it. I mean, he doesn't see this, um, this Dreadnought coming out, which is going to be definitely a problem for him. But, um, yeah, I still think the Organs and Mana Core is going to be good uh, until he has to really fight that dread. I don't know. I think between, I mean, the the Dreadnought is a perfect Manticore target, especially, I mean, he's got quite a bit of wreck. He'll be able to get some Stormtroopers on the field probably as soon as he sees that nice. Dreadnought. Yeah, it, yeah, if he can get that melt off and then mana core right on top of it, yeah, it might be able to quickly take out the dread. But um, you know, it's that's a lot that's a lot to kind of ask uh, at the same time, you know. And those ogrens just Cuz if he suffering. just has these scouts, yeah. If he has these scouts just get the sergeant and kind of just camp around that that dreadnought, then he'll be able to really avoid those stormtroopers. So it really depends on if uh, DSM keeps the stormtroopers a secret, but it looks like he's going a uh, heavy weapon squad instead. That's probably a safer bet, all things considered. You're going to need that last cannon, slow that dread down, and I mean, even with that kind of slow, that'll yeah. still be a dead-on easy shot for that mana cord. Not to mention the damage yeah, the ogres mean, I, themselves I, I, will do. Yeah, it's not so much of a like kind of way to kill the dreadnought, more of the just like deny it from um, from really being so aggressive, which I think is a good call. So he can like use these organs, and if they get in trouble, you know, just just fall back into that uh that uh head weapon squad rain. Oh man, here comes the last cannon. Rosen might have left that dreadnought in there a bit too long, but that devastator is providing some perfect covering fire, and uh, even with the last yeah. cannon firing at it, it should be able to get out of there. Oh man, but that Imperial Guard Laz Cannon hits so hard. Yeah, we got a health pack on those organs, so... I don't know, we might see him just charging straight at those uh, devs. Or not. I guess the uh, Dread kind of scared him away for a sec. Yeah, I mean, Rosen had a lot moving in here. That probably would have been a bad choice either way. Yeah. Although, here comes another Manticore Strike. Where's that hitting? Going for the Plasma Dev. One, two, Does he three. see it? No! Four. Oh man! Oh man! Not quite. Yeah, Dev gets away with, oh, with man. 13 HP. Oh, maybe the Sentinel can finish the it off. The Sentinel should have chased. It could have finished it off. I think it's going to be a bit too late right now. But with only six HP, 
it should have given chase right away. Yeah. In the meantime, looks like uh, Rosen's still on the defensive, trying to keep that power farm out the best he can, but that Devastator setting up point blank. Oh, and the head member goes down. Oh. Those tacks are in trouble. Yeah, I mean, he's got um two two plasma guardsmen squads, so if he can keep that just away from that Devastator, they're going to be able to just rip through those tacks. And even the Libby, once he gets out. We got creeping barrage going down. Doesn't quite connect. Little, little too, too late. Early. Yeah. Or too late for or the too, <laughs> early, yeah. too late for the devs. Too early <laughs> for the tax. One way or another, it may have taken out that dev if it had hit spot on now. Yeah. So VPs are still pretty even. Yeah, most definitely. And there's actually just a lot of the map not kept right now. I mean, that's of course thanks to that pesky sentinel. DSM running around though and trying to take out, uh, get all of that back in his control. Sentinel not normally alive this late in the game, so good job on DSM's part keeping that up because, I mean, people discount that late game, but that stun and uh, just the map control in general, it still poses a threat uh, throughout the game. Yeah, definitely, especially if he's like, you know, wandering around capping and just like uh, encountering these, these little scouties, uh, which, you know, aren't really that much of a threat, especially when they're upgraded with shotgun. Oh, here comes another strike right on top of the power farm. That's mean. Takes out a node and a oh, generator. Nice. Not bad. That's just free rec loss for uh, for DSM. Yeah, I really want to see this this librarian. See what he can do. Maybe he can just like almost insta give this little blob of guardsmen. Is that another manticore? I'm not sure if that's intentional or if that's maybe an overwatch <laughs> mistake and he's not catching it. But... No way. It's necessary. <laughs> oh man, Ogren's getting engaged with that Devastator. That might be going down. Plasma Dev's gonna try to get a shot off. Oh, and he does look like he's gonna save it. Ooh, and the Sentinel getting... Uh, is he gonna stomp? No. Not quite. But oh man, between yeah, I was a rock to see a, and a uh, librarian place. smite and a devastator could just instantly give both of these guards. Oh, that's my favorite. Yeah, smite combined with a plasma dev can yeah. give quite a few squads. I mean, if you're not if you're not watching it, there's not much that that combination won't take out. But I mean, with with two mana cores, he's just gonna be able to just just like shoot rockets at everything basically he sees so uh, Rosen really has to be careful like kinda when he splits his units to kinda get map control back he really has to make sure he pays attention to every one of his squads or else he's gonna lose them. Yeah you really need to have that kinda ubiquitous map awareness once that uh once those two manticores start dropping because otherwise squads are just gonna go down I mean with that librarian he's gonna need to make sure he's got his Veil of Time or his uh, his Psychic yeah, Hood ready. The... Uh, Gate of Infinity, yeah, sorry, hood. I couldn't think of that. <laughs> Gate of Infinity, either one of those, I mean, you're just going to have to be ready to spam those on your Devastators. So look at those two shiny Manticores just hanging around in the back, ready to go to action. Rosen finally starting to get some requisition back after uh, reinforcing quite a few tacks here. Ooh, and that Dreadnought. Oh, oh, trying to get a sneaky strike on the Dreadnought. <laughs> Did a little damage, but uh, good job just trying to keep some attrition on that. Keep the scouts from getting that back to full health as the Laz Cannon gets into position to start pouring some shots in if it advances. He should probably really yeah, just go I mean, for an I mean, Assault I mean, Cannon at this point. Yeah, I think you might be right, but DSM is just going to be keeping... Rosen on his toes, man. Like, if he just looks away, even at his dreadnought, he's gonna, like, take significant Oh, damage. look at use of, uh, the sniper rifle using, expanding the last nice. cannon range. Oh, but it looks like it can't see the dreadnought. Uh. Oh, and those guardsmen just ripping through those tacks. They gotta retreat right away. Yeah. Oh, but there's Ooh, a nice looking smite. It's both of those. Oh, where's that, uh, mana core? Oh. I'm the plasma does what they get away. That sentinel should that be decapping be that. 
wreck or that uh, victory point in the back since it's back there. Yeah, I think he's gonna do that. Yeah. Oh, there it goes. The librarian, yeah, he's in in those organs. He's got a. Uh, yeah, it looks like he's gonna get away. Yeah, that was a little cutting it a little close though. If those organs had gotten any sort of a uh, knockdown or anything, that would have been it. Although the dread's in a very precarious position right now. I don't know if it still has its emperor's fist. Oh, good micro by DSM oh, to dodge it. <laughs> oh, that dreadnought's going down. Oh, that dread is in trouble. Ah, oh. that apothecary needs to get out of there too. Even with that power axe, he's not going to hold up against four ogrens right now. Oh, and just the beat down. <laughs> yeah, he's he's gonna get taken out here. Yeah, he's, nice yeah. nice use of the uh, of the iron. And I mean, right DSM there. just constantly uncapping Rosen's natural VP. I mean, Rosen had the had a, um he should have had map control for so much of this game. I mean, he was able to power her as DSM a couple times, but he still has not been able to really get the VP lead. Yeah, it's a 2-0 against him. He's quickly ticking down at VPs. They were even, but I mean, a 2-0 cap makes it go down so quickly. Now there's a heavy turret down on the center field as well. So really just trying to fortify that central position. Yeah, I mean, this is like, especially on this map, it really does come down to just, like, how well can you hold this middle VP? And, I mean, um... Rosen, he does have a plasma dev, but you know that's not going to be enough, um, especially if he doesn't already have the middle. I mean, he'll be able to defend it if he somehow caps it, but it's going to be hard to really assault it. You know what I mean? Scouts here, war gear deployed. Yeah, most. I definitely. mean, he is getting a uh, scouts or uh, stealth scouts, so he might be able to just kind of sneakily, uh, at least uncap. It. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to see anything big from Rosen right now. I mean, he's just barely starting to get some time to head into Tier 3. He hasn't had a full power farm up the entire game after that initial Manticore strike. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I would really recommend going Tier 3, to be honest. Um, I don't know, because, I mean, he's so low on VPs, he can't really afford to uh, kind of keep this 2-cap going. But I mean, I don't know, DSM's uh, two mana cores, I was going to say, maybe if he gets like another Devastator, but it's not really going to help him that much. Angels of Death getting popped, I'm not sure if that's going to help long enough right here. Those tacks are in a lot of trouble, and oh man, looks like they're going to get out of there, but he does take down that heavy turret, finally. The heavy turret. Although the Manticore almost takes Ooh, out the Plasma Devastator yeah. in return. So, uh, excellent defensive play right now from DSM. Rosen's trying his damnedest to get out there, and he's probably really only got time for maybe one more push here after that next dread pushes the line here. Yeah, if he can somehow force this heavy weapon squad off the field, he'll be able to get um, this VP back. So, you know, if he can get a good smite off and scare it away, maybe follow up with a dev shot. I think these scouts are in the perfect position to do that right now. We can see them cloaking in. And uh, if they oh, get a yeah. well-placed grenade, it looks like they're a bit early cloaked, though, because they need to turn that off and get their supporting troops there. Go ahead. They're not going to have the energy to drop well, a grenade. Well, I mean, he's, he's only down, it. he's down to 71. He's got to do something quickly. He can't afford to really derp around. So he's got to use those scouts right now, get that off the field, or at least maybe just throw them at that VP and uncap it and stop the bleed. He's probably just going to try to engage them, I guess, and tangle them up so they can't fire on that Dreadnought and push right now. This is going to be all or nothing for yeah. Rosen right here. He's going to have to push back, get the Dreadnought up there, and uh, and get those Ogrens away from the VP. Man, I'm just so surprised that Sentinels lasted this long. No, and it's been causing some trouble, too. I mean, getting the decap on that VP makes those, you know, a 2-0 cap you know, makes the VPs go down twice as fast. And you just don't realize how much of a detriment that is. Here comes the double Manticore strike! Oh, Rockets man. raining down from the heavens on <laughs> all of Rosen's stuff. Oh, that is brutal! Yeah, but I mean, he still has... Uh, I mean, he doesn't have any tax left. No, he doesn't have his tax out there. 
And those those scouts might get the decap, but it, uh, they're not going to get the cap. Here comes another heavy turret. Scouts have to retreat right now. Oh man, they might make it out. Uh, One more shot. Yeah, there they oh, go. Oh, they at least got the decap, but it's not going to last that long. Oh man, that plasma does causing some heavy fire. He either needs to pull that librarian back or try to take out that Lord General in the meantime. Oh, one more hit and he's yeah, gonna he go down. To, he needs to get that, uh... Nice shot! Uh, he needs to get the point back. That Treadnought is all kinds of beat up though. With Ogrims moving in, it's not looking too good at all. Yeah. Uh, maybe a good stomp, but it's not going to buy him enough time to take out that turret, even with uh, Apothecary and uh, Librarian. Oh um, man, and the Missile Scent finishes it off. I tell you what, that Missile Sentinel <laughs> was just harassing the heck out of that it's Dreadnought vicious, during that man. whole yeah. chase. You kind of underestimate. That's what I was talking about, is you don't expect the Sentinel to be a big deal late game, but sometimes it's just in the right position. Rosen's just throwing his troops at the mercy of the Ogrens, and that's the game! So, oh man, that was... Yeah, that was pretty... That was nuts, man. That was rough, I mean, just... Double Manticore, you don't actually see that too often, but on this big a map, you don't even have to move around to defend your points. You can just sit back, guard those Manticores, push the middle, and just bomb the enemy all day long. Yeah, I really think DSM's use of that Sentinel, I mean, he kept it alive the entire game, and that's, like, almost unheard of against, like, Apothecary with two tacks and, like, Devastators and stuff. But, like, you know, Apothecary was forced to to kind of go all in here in Tier 2. If he if he was able, like, the VPs were, were a little more even, he would have been able to go into Tier 3, maybe get some terms, and it would have been really tough for DSM to deal with, but, uh... Yeah, DSM was just all over the, the VP control the, the entire game, so he kind of forced um, Rosen to kind of react. Yeah, I mean, he identified that Rosen's main staying power was his two Devastators, and he just obliterated that threat with that pair of Manticores, but... Yeah. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the game. This was Red Rupee here with Steve Budd, of course. Go check out his channel. He does some awesome Dow 2 casting as well. Yeah, yeah. So anyways, that's it for us. Red Ruby signing off. I will catch you guys next time. Later, dude.